Hey guys, so today I am going to talk about owning a sports card shop and how difficult it is to make ends meet. And um, I'm going to use clutch cards. I made a, five, I think there were four or five game stores in Houston, North, North Houston, and they all bankrupt at the same time. And I made a video about that. That obviously came back to those store owners, which didn't appreciate it, of course. But hey, the truth is that the opening a game store is a very difficult thing to do. And sometimes you got to post on social media. Now, this game store social media has now been deleted. So a lot of the flexing um, it can only be seen here. They did a lot of things right. They definitely had a very nice store. Their store looked really great. New furniture, new cabinets, a new product. And I think probably one of the reasons they ran out of money, and again, when you run out of money, there's, it's game over. Um, the margins on, let's say, a one piece are so thin that you need to sell by volume. You really have to do a volume or do mystery. They did mystery bags and so on. Um, they did bounties, they did everything they needed to do in terms of trying to make a business. So I don't fault them on this. I do think a lot of their mistakes were made on the flexing side. They traveled way too much. Uh, if you have a beautiful sports card shop, Pokemon shop, you run events, you run events. And Maybe the shop was too big. Maybe uh, when you take a look at the picture of the shop, it was a really big shop and it looks relatively empty. I don't know if they have extra desk or whatever. It seemed like these two people were operating the shop and instead of taking care of, you know, the home, the shop, they were busy traveling, living a luxury lifestyle, meeting famous people and just kind of doing what, young people want to do and they did it with a business and they did it with other people's money which is the same as MetaZoo. Uh, they did pre-orders just like MetaZoo does pre-orders and they didn't deliver them just like MetaZoo. Uh, the same thing with Mark's cards. They did submission, grading submission so everyone paid in advance even somebody as big as Card Collector 2 and then they didn't uh, submit because they ran out of money. This is very common because I, I think part of it is they're not financially intelligent enough to run a store. A lot of people who open the store, maybe this is their first business, they don't know that they shouldn't be traveling. That traveling is very expensive. Plane tickets are expensive. Hotels are expensive. Meals on the go are expensive. When you first own a game shop, you you got to minimize your expenses. You have to even, even work many many months if not years by yourself before you can hire an employee or two. A lot of these undercapitalized game stores, the reason they went out, but just like Mark's Cards, is they came during the COVID boom. They only knew of success. And then when the card stock went down, when card prices went down, they were shocked and, uh, and surprised when cards were not as valuable as they used to be which really shouldn't have been that shocking or that surprising to be quite frank with you, but it surprised and shocked them. So a lot of what um, I would probably say is hubris, right? You know, they gotta, you, you gotta work hard for what you have. And I think that's kind of lost upon a lot of people that owning a game store is not about flexing or not about trying to um, pretend that you're really wealthy and successful when you're not. Because the people who suffer in that case are the, your customers, right, who don't get their product. Same thing with MetaZoo. You see at MetaZoo, you see them flashing and you see them, you know, on collector con and they got every influencer on their payroll, right, even their own promos. And then you, you see that the people who suffer the most are the customers and the people who love MetaZoo the most, uh, as few of them, very few of them exist, but there are some of them. So there are comments where people actually enjoyed having this game store and they are surprised that this happened. But I'm not surprised. When you look at the social media, it's all flexing. 
but you're flexing cards that are losing value almost every day now. There are very few cards that, in sports cards, Pokemon, Magic, that are going up in price. We are in a, the S&P 500 is even down. Bitcoin is down. I mean, everything is very volatile until I think we choose another president. And that's my opinion, you know, as an analytical kind of guy. So we have a game store. It's a lot of empty space. I've never seen a game store this clean with that much empty space, with that much new shelves and stuff. I mean, I honestly think that, like, there might have been, if this was a game store in Houston, I might have been interested in buying it for a few hundred thousand dollars just to have because it's a great place to have events. It's a great place to do live breaks and live streaming. I give Sports Card Investor, who opened a huge store in Atlanta, some credit. He, he realizes that the store is not enough, that you have to hire um, streamers that are already famous, like Ali. From Titan Cards. As he's back streaming. So he has a huge audience by the way. So I mean good on them. You know I me actually go on whatnot right now. I think they're streaming on whatnot and TikTok. And you know I was listening. Uh, Mystic Rip 7. And he's opening a live stream. It's not an open game store. But the same idea. So what is it called? What is this called? Car Cards HQ. Is that what it's called? Let's see if anyone's streaming. Uh, Cards HQ. No, no one's streaming. So Cards HQ Shop, Cards HQ Breaks, and Cards HQ TCG. So it doesn't look like any of them is active right now as of this recording of this video on a Monday. Um, I think that's kind of weird. I think they should be up. They're selling their card stand for $20. That seems very expensive. Cards HQ, Cards... HQ breaks cards HQ TCG. Oh yeah, an alley um, personal breaks MTG. So they're doing breaks there. It's at least they're trying some stuff, right? I think that's probably better than not. But man, it's tough. Man, it's tough to own a car shop. And when a car shop goes under, it's the community that suffers. It's the customers that suffer. It. I mean, a lot of people are going to be very upset. So anyway, let me know what you guys think about uh, the, this card shop. Obviously, they are no longer in business. So I learned that it is actually, and they, they deleted all their social media. So the only place that you can learn about them is on my channel as they've deleted their YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. They were really big on Instagram. They really love the Instagram lifestyle, right? I mean, they're young guys and they're just kind of like, hey, using this card shop to show people that they're successful. But it's a money effing card shop. Like, it's going to lose money. Like, unless you have money, like I said this before, unless you have money pumped in from, like, somewhere else, you ain't going to make no money from no card shop. That's that's a flat fact, my, my guys. That's a fact. Someone's own a card shop, it always takes money because it's always a new product. And you, and then you feel like, oh, well, this new product will do well. and But it doesn't. And, and then if you miss, even one bad product can set you back quite a bit in time. It's actually quite surprising how much damage one bad product can do to a business. Anyway, that is it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Bye, guys.